Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton shared her thoughts on Biden's plans to leave Afghanistan, listing two major problems that she sees with the withdrawal. Here's what she had to say. You know there are consequences, both uh, foreseen and unintended, of staying and of leaving. The president has made the decision uh, to leave. And I think that uh, our government has to focus on two huge consequences. One, um, the potential collapse of the Afghan government and a takeover of Afghanistan by the Taliban. The second big uh, set of problems revolves around a resumption of activities by global terrorist groups, most particularly Al Qaeda and the Islamic State. All right, Democratic strategist Colin Roharo and culture editor at the Federalist, uh, Federalist Emily Chisinski join us now to discuss. Emily, we'll start with you. I think it is pretty telling that Hillary, joined by Condoleezza Rice out there on America's airwaves, making the case against the Afghan withdrawal. It just goes to show how bipartisan and ridiculous the actual opposition to this insanely popular and, in my view, correct policy is in the established centers of power in America. Yes, I think that is completely accurate. I don't, I don't think I could possibly say that better than you just did. And it's also, uh, by the way, the same excuse that they've been using forever. And they have no plan. That's the problem with this. Like She has no plan as to how to actually get us to a place where she could comfortably withdraw troops from Afghanistan and say, oh, well, we don't have to worry about these resurgent terrorist groups. And that's like a huge failure, not of Donald Trump, but of the entire people, like the Clinton, she was Secretary of State, everyone who led up to Donald Trump. And that's the same excuse they've been going at for years, and they have no plan, and they never have, to address that and to actually get us into a situation where we wouldn't have to worry about it. Instead, they keep grasping at the same excuse. Mm -hmm. Well, and Colin, I think, you know, it. Um, in my view, Biden deserves a lot of credit for standing up to this ideology um, on this issue of withdrawing from Afghanistan because uh, it looks like the Pentagon was really aligned against the decision, unsurprisingly. And he went, you know, went with what he thought was right and what his advisors also thought was right over the Pentagon. You can see this sort of bipartisan pressure campaign that is coalescing with Condoleezza Rice and with Hillary Clinton going uh, to the Foreign Affairs Committee and saying, hey, we see some major problems here. So um, this is the type of pressure that he's going to continue to face until troops are actually out of Afghanistan. Yeah, I think that's right, and he will, but I think we have to give a lot of credit to President Biden here as a president who's actually had a child who's been in harm's way in foreign wars. And so he is probably viewing this from a perspective of a parent and then as a president simultaneously. And I have to admit that that would give me a different perspective on issues like this. And, and look, I think what Emily said is right in terms of a plan. And I'm not sure that it's been a lack of plan that you know our military and, our US, and the US government has had here. I just don't think any of these plans are workable. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think you can actually be a country that is a ward of the United States who's keeping it together by virtue of, of you know, our blood and treasure. And it's not the job of the U.S. military to do that. They're not actually capable of doing that in the long term. They should have a mission that they go in, complete their mission and get out and we should bring our troops home. We can't build Afghanistan if Afghanistan itself does not want to be built. And that's just not, a, it's never worked historically. We can study history forever. It's just not something that functionally works yeah. when an outside force builds a country that doesn't want to be built on its own. Just no, not I, workable. I, that's the most important thing. And you're right. There is no plan. There's nothing that's going to work. And basically everything that's been tried has been tried. And there is no real solution to this entire thing. And it does show, to Crystal's point, the, they are already, you know, with Hillary and Condoleezza Rice, they are going all in in the media, leaking about about, oh, the Taliban this. The Guardian is like women in Afghanistan wonder what's next. The New York Times, CNN, Fareed Zakaria is one of those chief voices. The institutional centers of power, especially in D.C. and in the media, are so wholly aligned against him. Trump, because he was incompetent, was not able to do this. And I do think it is very telling that Biden actually pulled the trigger. And again, look, September 11 is a long way away. We'll see how it actually all comes to fruition. But something tells me that this one might actually get done. 
Yeah, no, I I think that's true. I think Mm -hmm. the fact that he actually made the decision to begin with is telling. Um, And, you know, again, it's like Colin is completely correct about this. For them to to concede that this might be the right move is to concede that their entire neoliberal worldview that launched this war, saying we can change other countries with our military, is incorrect and flawed and not workable. And so for them to concede that point is conceding something much deeper in about the perspective that those people had when they went into this war to begin with, and they're still clinging to it. And it's not just them, as Sagar, you just said, it's also the media. It's pretty much the entire Washington establishment. So yeah, the pressure is going to be tough on Joe Biden, but I think the fact that he actually announced this and put a hard date on it, we'll see how that ages. But to begin with, I think that does say that he has a pretty serious intention to follow through, regardless of the pressure. I'm sure he expected all of this. Yes. Colin, what do normal Democrats think of Hillary Clinton these days? Uh, I I don't know. You have to define normal (laughs) Democrats. You're you're mean Democratic voters. (laughs) On who you're talking to. Look, I think there's a lot of admiration for Hillary um, in her leadership positions. I think people felt that, you know, she as the first woman running uh, as the presidential nominee, um, you know, there's a lot of still admiration for her and things that she's done o- over her career. Uh, you know, I don't think that applies to, pe- you know, how, how she ran her campaign. I think a lot of Democrats have issues with that. Um, but, you know, I think when we look at Afghanistan, she's been secretary of state. She has a certain opinion on things. And what she is saying is not untrue. Will there be a resurgent Taliban? Probably. Will Is life going to get more difficult for women in the country of Afghanistan? Probably. It's pretty difficult now. I'm not sure how it could get all mm-hmm. that much worse. But the question we have to ask at this point in time is, how many more American women and men and our international partners are we going to sacrifice to try to maintain a peace that does not want to be maintained? This yeah. is the real question that we have to ask ourselves and we have to define for ourselves. And I would argue that we've sacrificed enough American blood there, that we should be removing ourselves from that situation and keep it in a place where hopefully it can't do the American people any harm, but it's not our responsibility, not our our men and women in in uniforms responsibility to try to build that country if it's not going to be built on its own. It's just really not, well it's not, it's not our job. Mm-hmm. Really well said, guys. Thank you. Very thoughtful panel. Appreciate Great it. Great to see you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. More rising for you after this.